Remember we lived, used to live next to a neighbour in an apartment block and he had a Tim Tam pyramid. Oh, yes. And these white Tim Tams, it was, it was for show. It was on a counter, it had a glass, what would you call that over it? A glass. A display glass bowl yeah, with a lid yeah, on it. It took 16 packs of Tim Tam to make his pyramid and every week the cleaners would... Replace the Tim Tams. Replace the Tim Tams, yeah. <laughs> he was a multi, multi-millionaire, which is what they do. I think the cleaners enjoyed it because they took the Tim Tams home. Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to Colette's Thermic Kitchen. My name is Colette Matriga. Um, I am a Thermomix consultant here in Australia um, and of course if you would like to get a TM6 please reach out. Only a couple of days left where if you order your TM6 you can get this extra bowl blade and lid and there's nothing like having two bowl blades and lid for just an extra $29. It's going to save you about $366 so now is the time especially as we're building up to Christmas. So um, what we're going to do, we're focusing a little bit on Christmassy things in my life um, in the next few weeks. And today we're making one of my very favorite Christmas sweet bites, let's put it like that. And they're just Tim Tam balls. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Absolutely delicious. So Tim Tams, for those of you that don't know, I know we've got lots of uh, viewers overseas. Basically, it's like a, a malt biscuit, two layers with a cream um, filling and then they're covered either in white chocolate, dark chocolate, you get all sorts of coverings and all sorts of flavours now. And I do believe one of my lovely customers told me there is even a gluten-free variety. How awesome. Penguins. And yeah, in the UK you'd have penguins which are kind of similar. Um, not as good, I have to say Tim Tams are pretty darn good. So um, that's what we're going to be using today. So let's get started. The recipe is now up on my blog. Um, so you can go and have a look at the recipe, print it off, and please remember with my blog, I'm, I'm building still, um, the more you can leave a comment on there, the more it actually helps me, just like everything really. Um, okay, so we're going to start off, this is totally optional, I'm going to add in here um, 20 grams of pistachio and 20 grams of um, cranberries. Now. Um, it is optional, but I, it just adds that little bit more um, Christmassy aspect into these. And I do love the tartness of the cranberries when you actually bite into them. So I'm going to add 20 grams of each into the bowl. And we are just going to cut those up a little bit because they're just a bit too big for these little tin So this is a cookie do recipe? No, it's my own recipe and it's so So you're going, this is going on the blog? This is going on the blog. Now normally I don't make these until December and I force myself not to make them during the year, which is why I absolutely love them so much during December or during Christmas. <coughs> so it's actually up on my blog. So to, to chop these and keep an eye on them, what I want to do is I'm going to go into, into my modes on the TM6 and I'm going to hit the turbo mode. Oh, that's the chop mode. Isn't the chop mode amazing? I love the chop mode. Um, let's not go into the chop mode, we don't want that one. Put your glasses on Colette. Um, turbo mode, just down here. And all I need to do is give that a couple of one second blasts. So it's going to fling it up really fast, settle it back down, let's go again. And now I'm just going to take a peek to see how that's looking and see whether I need to go again. Right, let's have a little look. Oh, that's perfect. So two one-second blasts, absolutely perfect. So back home. I love turbo. It's, a, it's something I use a lot. So can you see how nice and finely they're chopped up? Perfect little um, truffle size. So I'm going to pop these back into this bowl. Yeah. So Sharon says, hi, Colette and ladies. Excuse me, but there are some men on this one as well. <laughs> Okay, now um, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to get the tin tans in and um, two packets and you could use chocolate, you could use whichever flavour tin tans you want, um, but I'm putting the white one in. So two packets. So always during December, 
you'll find uh, Tim Tams will come on special at various times, so just wait until they're on special. Oh, that one was trying to make an escape. It was, trying, it was heading for my mouth. Mm, I'm glad it didn't go there. We need oh, two packets, Andrew. Okay, and all I'm going to do now is to break those down, and I think seven seconds. So Sharon now says, oh, sorry, Andrew and gentlemen. So she's now saying, I'm not a gentleman. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same down here on the Gold Coast. It is chucking it down with rain. It is. Not at all. Quite humid as well. So Tim Tams have gone in. Now we're going to add all the other bits. So here I've got 220 grams of cream cheese. I love Philly and it's going to be full fat. But you use whatever you want. The uh, cream cheese actually from Aldi's isn't too bad either. So you can choose whatever you want there. Right. So cream cheese has gone in. I'm going to reintroduce the nuts back in and the pistachio, uh, the uh, cranberries. And I'm going to add in a pinch of salt. And I'm also going to add in 60 mils of Bailey's, my favorite alcohol. Oh, how could you spare that? I know, I know. It's because I love these so much. Tim Tams, room temperature? It doesn't really matter for Tim Tams, but you definitely want your cream cheese at room temperature. And remember, anything at room temperature is going to, going to whip up so much easier um, for you. So we've got the nuts, the salt, the Baileys and the Tim Tams. And all I'm going to do now is mix all those together. And I reckon about five seconds on speed four should do that. Give it a little turn and just get a feel for how well that, that's perfect. Just perfect. And you see, I've just given that a turn. That's already now to be formed into in walls. So the way that I like to do this is um, I am going to no, grab a little small size um, ice cream scoop. Um, and these come in all different sizes. And I'm just going to pop little truffle size, and you should get about 30 of these. Now, in terms of storing these, these will last a couple of weeks if they're in an air tight container once you've made them in the fridge. Um, and you can freeze them for about two to three months quite happily once they're made. And, you know, I quite enjoy eating them when they're kind of still kind of frozen. They're quite lovely on a hot day. Um, so the great thing is you can make these now, pop them in the fridge until your Christmas guests all start arriving. Right, now I'm going to carry on with the rest of these later. So I'm just going to pop these. So you could inside. replace the Baileys with? Whatever you want. So whatever, you know, any alcohol orange juice, whatever flavour you think is going to complement what you've actually Rum, rum would be nice. Rum would be lovely. So I'm just going to pop that to one Southern side. Southern Comfort would be nice. And we'll continue that later. So once I've done this, I just Contra need to nice. just gently give these a nice roll so they're kind of truffle-ish. Malibu would be nice. Yeah, so many different flavours. So whatever you love, you know. Um, and you could swap the almonds, you could do all sorts of different things in here. Up to you. So they're not truffles, because truffles basically has that ganache filling, which is predominantly chocolate and cream. So just rolling these. Now if you find they get really sticky, just wet your hands and shake them off. Um, but these are absolutely fine, but they are very soft. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pop these into the freezer while we get on with the chocolate. Right, so excuse me, I'm going to dump these in the freezer. Bye-bye. <coughs> Still here, she's got her cough lingering three weeks now. Just a short interlude here. 
Oh, what's that behind there? Is that a loaf of bread? Yeah, that's... The, oh, yeah, actually, you guys might be interested in this. Here's the... It's beautiful. So, um, this is literally not long come out of the oven. It's just cooling down. You hear it? It's just beautiful. Um, this is an artisan loaf of bread. It's not a sourdough. And I don't actually make this in the Thermomix. I... It, it takes me hardly any time to make this at all. It's kind of a foolproof loaf of bread. Um, pop in the comments if you want me to show you how to make this. You don't have to worry about it rising and it's it's not um, as complex as a sourdough, but it's a lovely bed, a uh, loaf of bread. We love it. Because Andrew's not a great sourdough lover. Hate it. I know. So, but that's an artisan loaf, which follows a lot of the same principles and it does taste really good. Okay, so I'm going to get... <coughs> so this is where your second bowl yeah. comes in handy. Definitely. And clean bowl. And you want to make sure it's dry. Whenever you're working with chocolate, you need, you need a dry bowl. Nothing um, wet because on here. That's not um, it has to be absolutely dry when you're working with chocolate. Now, I must be honest, often I will temper my white chocolate to put on top of these. Once you temper your chocolate, you get that hard out outer shell, which means you can kind of leave them out. You don't necessarily have to freeze them and things like that. But that's for another time, I think. So today we're just going to melt the chocolate, which means that these will need to be kept in the fridge or in the freezer. So, into the Thermomix bowl, I'm going to add some white chocolate. So, I, I'm using, so whatever your favourite white chocolate is, you can go and buy those Dream Bars, whatever you like to eat. This, these are the Courbature white chocolate bars. You're not allowed this today, are you, Bibi? Um, so, um, these are absolutely delicious. So, I'm popping that in here. And there's about 400 grams of those. Milk, remember Milky Bars? Oh, yes. Like in England, the Milky yeah. Bars are on me, the Milky Bar Kid. So um, the first thing we want to do is, is to grate that down. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go for um, ooh, about 10 seconds, I reckon will be fine. Yeah, 10 seconds should be fine because they're not so big. Oh, 10 seconds at speed nine. And be loud. So this is not cooking chocolate, is it? No, this is eating chocolate. This is fine yeah. Belgian. This so is... you wouldn't use cooking chocolate for this, No, you, you wouldn't. So cooking chocolate um, is not as sweet and it, it doesn't have that same cocoa content. And if you're making anything kind of truffly or little treats, you want to use good quality chocolate. This was a lint uh, couverture chocolate that I bought off Amazon. <coughs> There's all sorts around. You can, as I said, you can get the bars of chocolate from all these if you prefer. Um, and also the um, the eating chocolate in Aldi's is pretty good. I have used that in the past and that's pretty good too. Now to melt your chocolate, you don't want to ever go above 50 degrees. 50 degrees is a good kind chocolate melting kind of one. And I reckon we're going to go for five minutes. Ooh, okay. What am I doing? Five minutes. Um, 50 degrees. And I'm going to go at speed number two. And um, that should melt that down beautifully in that time frame. And then what we're going to do is coat the chocolates. So we have a few minutes interlude. Andrew, what can we talk about? I've got no idea. <laughs> um, any questions from anybody? Well, I can tell you on Thursday, Thursday we are doing another live, and Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4 o'clock are our live days. Can you hear me okay? I hope you can, it's a bit noisy. Queensland time. Queensland time always, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and on this Thursday what I'm going to be doing is little um, pork and sage and onion stuffing balls. And so they're little, little round stuffing balls and you can put them on the Christmas dinner. You can make them now, freeze them again if you want to. But they're just lovely to put out on a platter. And one of the things that we love to do, a bit of our family tradition, Christmas, very simple, is my boys, 
we will sit down in front of the TV. What's the movie that's usually on, Andrew? The Grinch. The Grinch. The Grinch is on in the background, and we have a big platter of all sorts of food, sliced ham, sausage rolls, sausage balls, just all sorts of goodies, salads and stuff, and we just nibble and graze throughout the evening. So that's our kind of um, New Year's Eve tradition. So you can, you can use the self-cleaning on this after the chocolate? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's a great point. You know, if you melted chocolate, um, you obviously scrape out the chocolate that you want to use. But a great little thing is if you've got the TM6, you can do it in a five, but slightly differently. Just pour in a cup of milk and then go to your warm-up mode and warm it up to about 80, 90 degrees. Oh, you got a hot chocolate. And then the Thermomix will call you back when it reaches that temperature and you've got a beautiful cup of hot chocolate. So you don't waste anything, which mm. is wonderful. Mm. If someone asks, how, how do you drink your Baileys? That's easy. Oh, my God. In a glass. <laughs> I am so bad. Andrew bought me three bottles of Baileys a few days ago. Oh, my gosh. He says, I had to make it last until the end of Christmas. That ain't going to happen. Um, I drink it straight. I, Andrew tells me I drink it like a milkshake. Milkshake, it is. It. He's got straw in it. <laughs> it's, it's my nemesis. I, I prefer not to have it in the house because I really find it very hard to resist. No ice. Some people put milk in it, I believe. I can't quite figure that one out, but... Well, no, just dilute, I guess. I guess but, uh, just straight. What was the speed for chopping the Tim Tams? Uh, chopping the Tim Tams, um, seven and seven. About seven seconds on speed, seven. But don't forget the recipe is on my blog. So my blog is colettesgourmetkitchen.com. So just head there, hunt for the Baileys, just put that in the search bar or the Tim Tams, and um, up will come my post. And then you can print out this recipe. And if you want to and you love it, you can actually, with your, your TM6, type it in. And it's going to be there forever for you, fully guided, which would be great. Have you ever made your own Baileys in the film? I have. I've uh, made I my own Baileys, you did, yeah. yeah. Um, now, what I'm going to do, I, um, I prefer the original Baileys. I've, I've done a few different varieties and they are very nice. Um, I, just, I just love them. Ladies. So all I'm doing here, it's melted, but I need to get the stuff down from the side. So this is the last the bit. stuff. This is the chocolate and off the top of the blades. Um, so just so that will melt through and that will, that's nearly done now. Okay, yum. So Tracy's asked, have you tried Amarula? Amarula. South African version of Bailey's, I assume. Um, okay, so just carrying on for a little bit more. <coughs> My um, favourite Christmas day drink is the oh, the champagne lychee sorbet. I think that's what it's called. It is so good. So what you do, you freeze the lychees and then you blend it all up with champagne and you make little frozen lychee balls to go in it. It's just a gorgeous drink. Um, love that drink. Nearly done here. Any other questions from anybody while we're waiting? Up in there, Andrew? No? You're not talking to me today? Um, so for my customers, just to let you know, in case you've missed it, this Wednesday night we've got our meal planning classes and I will share with you my formula for meal planning and give you some quick tips around, you know, being in the kitchen, using you know, your produce, what you've got on hand, and all those tips that are associated with meal planning. So that's on, um, I think it's seven o'clock on Wednesday night, but it's on my link tree. So um, if you are my customers, you can come along to that. It's one of our core customer classes that we run. All right, I reckon this will be done. So even though I said five minutes, you can go for five, but that's perfectly fine. Now. It's all nice and melted, which is what I want. So I'm just going to continue with that while I go and grab those Tim Tam balls. It's another interlude. And, oh, there she comes. Right. So nice and cold, that's what you want. Is, so that, is, that, is that all you got out of all those Tim Tams? No, there's, there's tons. You'll get oh. about 30 out of one batch. Um, but just for speed, um, I thought I would do this and I can reheat this up. Um, now there's a whole number of ways that you can do this. You can put a, a, a toothpick in there 
and pop it in. Let's do that way. It's nice and clean. Is that going to fall off? What's that? The toothpick? Well, the ball. I'll fall off the toothpick. No? And if you've got a polystyrene ball uh, or, or tray, what you can actually do is you can um, just, so just dripping that down and then popping that back onto here. Um, and then I'm just going to leave that toothpick in there. So this is one way. So now Nancy's currently cooking your favourite car with Thai chicken green curry. That's we had that last week, do you remember? We did, we did, excellent. Yeah, we put potatoes in, we like potatoes and curries. So you can, you can actually, um, I'll just get a little cold, do them this way so it's nice and clean, not so messy. Okay. Now I'm not going to do tons here, I'm just going to do a few to give you an idea. Another popular way of uh, doing this um, is with gloves. So simply what you can do is pop on some food grade gloves. You're yeah, going hands deep. <laughs> and all you need to do is just to pop a little bit of the chocolate. And this is how I do my... <laughs> no way. Um, absolutely. And you actually end up getting um, less chocolate on this way. But you can see that now is totally covered. Yeah, but it's going everywhere. Stick with your right. toothpick. So that's one option. Forget that option. That's a really popular option if you're on a budget. Um, and <laughs> the, the other way is you can just drop it in. And then if you have some chocolate tools, truffle tools, you just use this to scoop out. And um, Well, that's probably the easiest way, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. So whichever way you, you, work, you want to work. So these I got from the kitchen warehouse, in case anyone asks. Um, but you'll get them on Amazon. There'll, there'll be lots of kitchen shops that'll sell them. They often come in a pack of um, three different tools, which are quite handy. Um, and I'll just pop that there. All right, so I'm just going to pop these back into the freezer. And what I'll do later on is I'll just warm that back up and then continue to fill these. So these are going back in the freezer. I'll put you back in a minute. There she goes. <laughs> Cameraman's nightmare. <coughs> right. And then the final little step that we need to do, just to make these guys look extra pretty, I need another bowl. Let's grab this one. The third bowl. Um, is I'm just going to melt a little bit of white chocolate. So... Just a little white bit of white chocolate just to... Um... It looks, looks brown to me, but what do I know? Oh, <laughs> it is. It's, it's milk chocolate, not white chocolate. Milk chocolate. Oh, gosh. Putting the lid on. And it'll be able to do. And I'm just going to melt that. It's less chocolate, so I'm going to go for um, about two minutes. That's going to probably be plenty. And then we're nearly finished. So two minutes. That's fine. 50 degrees at speed two. Decorate the actual chocolate, which we'll do in a second. Um, that's done. That's done. So All right. Ramona asks, "What are the tools called, please?" I've yeah. got no idea. One's called Nigel. <laughs> one's called Simon. <laughs> um, I really have no idea. I think they're truffle tools. I think they're called. They're designed for dipping chocolate. I've seen Wilton do do the. I think these ones are from Wilton, and I think you can get them in Spotlight as well. So you can see what that looks like. It's got a little, so really good if you're into making truffles, but toothpicks or, you know, is also quite handy. But I, I do, this is my preferred way. Um, so what I'm doing, I've got my uh, Thermomix. I'm sure lots of you have got the, the icing bag. I love these. I think they're brilliant, brilliant. So easy and convenient. Um, I'm just going to pop this into a cup, plastic beaker, and then we're going to pop that chocolate into here. Once that's melted, I'm just going to do a quick scrape down. Get a clean spatula. Alright, So I've just got a couple of chocolate callets on there. Now, um, I didn't blitz these down because they're small callets um, and that means they're going to melt nice and quickly anyhow. So just a few more seconds and they'll be done. 
Right, so I'm going to go back, get the chocolates out again, and then, actually, I better not, I'll give them, give them back a minute more. So, put in the comments if you think you're going to make these for Christmas. Are these going to be on your Christmas table? And maybe what other variations will you do with yours? All right, that's going to be fine. So we only need a little bit of this. So you can see it's all melted. I've got one little colour that escaped, but that's okay. So I'm just going to pull this this lot here into here. And I love the fact that all of these bowls will clean themselves super easy. Um, because <laughs> yes. You tell us, are you going to make these? I love Meg's comments. Yes, just buy the bucket load. <laughs> <laughs> they are so good. They're my favourite. Can you freeze? Can you freeze these? Yeah, they freeze for two to three months there. And I actually do quite enjoy eating them when they're kind of semi-defrosted. They're just beautiful. So um, just a little thing, if you have used the toothpick, what you want to do is take it out and then just put a little bit of chocolate on top of the hole. <laughs> really? Who cares? Really, because it just seals them in and you don't want to hold them in. Okay. So that's good. They're all looking lovely. All right. They're still a bit. So you can just tidy them up a little bit. Mm, come for you. And then grab your chocolate, I think. Tie that off. And then all you will do, the tiniest, tiniest of holes. Just put my lips on top of this. One. And then all you're going to do is just to literally drizzle. Drizzle. Successful drizzling is basically tiny tiny hole now you can imagine 30 of these little guys coming out on the christmas table how gorgeous will they be and then you will pop them in the fridge to set properly with that dark chocolate and um and then you'll enjoy them so <laughs> got get to try one this is my first one of the year how lovely is this going to be mm. I'm just having a look in the camera, and I know you don't want one, but... I do want one, but I'm on a low-carb diet this week. Oh, that is so... Good. It's so cruel. I'm sorry. Taste the babies, little crunch, little sharp hits from the cranberries, crunch from the nuts. It is so delicious, and the cream cheese is just beautiful. You can actually, if you want to, also put a squeeze of lemon in there. Up to you, but that's... No, uh -huh. not lemon. Mm. That is so good. You need to be a bit colder. But there you have it. How easy. Mm. That's me for today. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. As I said, head to my blog, leave a comment, make them up, leave a comment, um, enjoy them. They are very delicious, and I think everyone that eats them will enjoy them. So then, have fun. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. I will see you on the Thursday at four o'clock for our. Um, Christmas stuffing balls. Christmas what balls? Stuffing balls. So our pork sage and onion little stuffing balls, which are delicious. All right. Say goodbye. Goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, Andrew. And <laughs> bye, everybody. Finish this one off and then. Mm. I do love these.